title of the message is The Rapture, Ready or Not. Right? We played that game when we were little kids, Ready or Not. Here I come. Remember that? The excitement. No, 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 I'm not ready. I got to get, I got to hide someplace. I got to hide someplace. Well, the Lord is there and he's waiting for the appointed time. And at the appointed time, he's going to come back and claim all of us who are in his kingdom, who are part of his family, those who have died beforehand and those who are living at that appointed time. And so we're going to talk about that from these verses in Scripture. Um, the key verse this morning is 1 Thessalonians 4.17. And it reads, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Wow. We'll explore that in just a little bit. But the first point as we get into these verses is that Jesus will resurrect all those who have died in Christ to be with him forever. Some amazing things he has in store for us. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 reads this way, and you can follow it on the screen, you can follow it in your bulletin with the handout and the fill in the blanks. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Brothers and sisters, writing to the church, we don't want you to be uninformed. The Lord wants you to be informed. Paul, I, Paul, want you to be informed through the Holy Spirit about important things. And so those who have fallen asleep in Christ, in other words, those who have passed, those who have died, I don't want you to think and, and, and have no hope relative to them and, and later on, even relative to yourself, he talks about, do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. At my aunt's memorial, while it was difficult and we're mourning the loss of our loved one, and that's a very difficult thing for many of us to experience and go through, the loss of close, close loved ones, there was a full-on, and I mean full-on rejoicing, even by her adult children who were there who have this full understanding in Christ that she's with the Lord now and in a place where she will suffer no more. The end of her life, there was a lot of difficulties with her health. Um, but one of the things that was remarkable to all of us, and this was so true to our aunt with her faith in Christ, every picture that was displayed from the time she was a little baby girl to the time literally a couple of weeks before she passed away at 88 years of age, every picture, every slide with the seasons of life and the changes, you saw a smile on her face in every one, ear to ear. This is one of the things we remember about our aunt. She had such a trust in the Lord and she just simplified things all the time. The Lord's in charge. It's okay. And she'd smile. And whatever was going on, and she had a lot of tough experiences in her early life and in her later life, always a smile on her face because of her relationship with Jesus Christ. He can put that smile on her face. He can keep that smile on her face no matter how difficult things get. And part of the reason why we can smile is not just knowing that our sins are forgiven and we're saved, but we're redeemed and we'll be with the Lord forever. And she knew even weeks before she was talking with her son about the Lord was preparing to take her home. And he knew that. And she was looking forward to being with him. And we were celebrating that, understanding that she is with the Lord even now and forevermore, and that we will all get to be with her again. And our other loved ones who have predeceased us in Jesus Christ. And so there's this beautiful understanding that provides tremendous comfort. And in fact, Paul is talking about if you don't have this understanding, you're going to be grieving like the rest of mankind because others who don't have Christ don't know even what they're missing out on, really, unfortunately. 
They don't know. They're just grieving the loss of something. And this life is over. And oh my goodness, who knows what comes next? Well, God doesn't want us to be in a place of not understanding what comes next. He's telling us that we're going to be with him. I've made a place for you, he tells us. But let's talk about the next verse, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For we believe that Jesus died. They actually were there, many of them. They knew that Jesus died and rose again. Many of them saw Jesus after his death. Unbelievable. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Because God has the power to resurrect, and Jesus Christ himself is resurrected, we also have this great hope and this understanding that God is going to bring and resurrect all of us to be with Jesus Christ. This is a great thing to focus on, to understand, and to come back to in our life, to keep us in a place of hope, of looking to the future while, we, while we're living life today. What great information God gives to us and wisdom that he shares about what's going to happen. And we can believe in it. Because it's his holy word, we can believe in it because Jesus did die and did come to life and is resurrected and he sits at the right hand of the Father. We can believe all of these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 54 to 55 says, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Those who don't have Christ... All they have is the sting of death. What we have in Jesus Christ is the victory over death, over sin, over all things that are evil, all things that would keep us from knowing the true God of the universe and having life in Jesus Christ forevermore. We have this great victory thanks to Jesus Christ. The penalty for our sin is death. Jesus came to eliminate the sting of death and to conquer it so that we could have life forever. This is remarkable. This is worth rejoicing in every day. John 14, 3 reads this way. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Oh my goodness, we know these verses well. We really do. Christ told his disciples, and it's written down so that we have this information too. He was preparing them that he was going to die, that he was going to be resurrected that he was going to go and prepare a place for them and he would come back. He would come back and bring us, bring them, bring us to be with him so that we could be where he is. And that is forever. John 14 is actually written on my mom's and dad's gravestone. We reference that in my aunt's memorial because we know that he came back for her and he's bringing her to that place and already has. So we are blessed with this knowledge. We are blessed with this future provision that is so beautiful. The second point this morning is that Jesus will raise first those who have fallen asleep in Christ. He says he'll raise first. 1 Thessalonians 4.15, according to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. See, people were concerned about their loved ones, those who had already passed. What's going to happen to them? What happens to them? And also by extension, then maybe once we're passed, what happens to us, right? But what happens to them, Lord? Well, we tell you, that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. And 1 Thessalonians 4.16 goes on, For the Lord himself 
will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Here we are. Here's what people point to and talk about the rapture where Jesus Christ comes back and he brings first and raises first all of those who have died in Christ. The first thing that happens is he's going to call them. He's going to bring them. But it's going to happen in such a powerful way as you can only imagine it happening with the Lord. Now that he's coming back in glory and to do these miraculous, marvelous things, it starts off with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Can you imagine that day when that takes place and that resounding sound, that call, that trumpet call, and it's going to be incredible. This is going to be a powerful, powerful moment. And then the dead in Christ will rise first. Those who have already died, but who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they're going to be raised. Their bodies are going to be raised. We'll talk a little bit later and at some other time about glorified bodies that we're all going to have once we pass into this next life. But God has a plan and it's specific. And here's how it takes place. Those who have already died are going to rise first into the air. Then Jesus, point three, will also raise the rest of us who are still living at that time to be with him in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 says, After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. First, those who have died are going to be raised up by God himself into the air to be with him in the clouds. But then all of us, whoever is living at that time, I might not be. I might be. We'll talk about God's timing of when this event is going to take place that is referred to commonly as the rapture. Whoever is still alive at that precious moment in history is going to be raised up as well. And then all together, we are going to be with the Lord in the air, in the clouds. Amen. Oh, think about that moment. Think about that moment. I actually had a really weird thought. I had a really weird thought this morning because I, by the grace of God, I don't want to boast, but there's not too many things that put the fear of God in me. But heights do. And I don't, I'm not afraid to fly, but I'm afraid it was tough to go up on, you know, the high dive and look down. It was tough to go up you know, to the top of the Empire State Building and look over for me. We're going to be so much higher than the high dive. We're going to be so much higher than the Empire State Building. We literally are going to be up in the clouds with our risen Lord all together. I'm thankful that he's not going to have fear as a part of my life at that time. In fact, there will be no fear. This is going to be an incredible moment in the history of man and womankind. It's incredible to think what the Lord has in store. And we'll all be there together. My aunt will be there. My dad will be there. We'll be there. Whether we've already died or not, we're going to be there. That is a time to look forward to. That is a time to cherish. And it's going to be overpowering and beautiful yesterday at Denise's wedding I was just so overjoyed for her for Bill for all of us present for the Lord just what he did in this remarkable beautiful supernatural union that took place and how marvelous it is and the glorious day at the lake that's awesome but think about how awesome it's going to be when we are all raised together out of this world to be with Jesus Christ. And then what does it say? And so we will be with the Lord forever. 
This isn't just a precious moment. This is the moment that starts the rest of our lives in eternity. Oh my goodness. It's incredible to think about this. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 52 also share about this. It says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Do you hear that? I tell you a mystery. Even as he tells it to us, it's still a mystery to us as to how all of this is going to happen. And God's timing. It's a mystery still. But there's such important information for us to latch on to. We're not all going to sleep. We're not all going to die before this day happens. Many will be alive in Christ. But we will all be changed in a flash. This is in a moment. This is in a flash. We're changed. We're translated out of here. We are now with our risen Lord and everything's different. And he says, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. When we laid my aunt's remains in the ground in this special service, at the end of it, we all had this great understanding from dust to dust. Her body has returned to the earth. She's not there. She's not there. She's already with the Lord. Her spirit, her soul is already with the Lord. But on this particular day, she is going to be raised as well. And everyone else who's passed. And all of us who might be. Because I don't know if I'll be living when this moment takes place. This rapture. I don't know. Me, you, God can call me home today or he can rapture me tomorrow. I don't know. He surely does. But when it happens, we are raised and now this body, this life that's destined for decay, for death even, and to be laid (laughs) or however our body remains after we pass, this is corruption. This is something that decays. This is something that's not perfect. This is something that perishes. But we are going to be raised. We are going to be raised imperishable. We will be changed forevermore. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? I was was reading something just the other day. From Johnny Erickson Tata, and we know who she is, right? And we know her story and her ministry, you know, paraplegic and from years ago and all the things that she's gone through and her body is more than frail. It's crippled. It's, it's really, and, and she talks about this and she goes, can you imagine what this means to me or someone like me who has this body that's already corrupted and, and really is broken and just doesn't work? To think that I'm going to be raised and we all will be raised at the appointed time in glory with Jesus Christ with a body that will no longer perish, that will be perfect, that will be something that doesn't limit us the way I'm limited now. It's amazing to think about that. It's beautiful to think about that. I don't have to be afflicted the way she's been afflicted to also have this understanding and you as to how special that is. I see every year of my life that I keep getting strong. No, I keep getting weaker. There's things that don't work the same way. There's things that become a bigger concern and it's harder with the physical pains and sufferings. Laura knows that firsthand. Many know that firsthand in a more serious way. But oh my goodness, to think about all of that being at some point in our past and in our future, these glorious bodies that will not perish, just, it just lifts you up. 
it just lifts you up to think about the great future that God has for us. I'm so glad he shared. He didn't have to share this information. But he knew how important it would be for us to have this information so that we could understand what he has prepared for us. It would have been enough, right, for Jesus just to say, hey, I'm going to a place and I'm preparing a place for you. And we just know you're perfect. You're amazing. You have unconditional love and grace and mercy for us. It's going to be a great place. It's going to be awesome. But God says, you know, I've provided that information. I'm going to give you more information because I really want you to take hold of this and how beautiful it's going to be. How beautiful it's going to be in Revelation. Talking about No more tears. No more tears. No more suffering of any kind. Come on. Who wants that life? Who wants to get translated right now? Go ahead. Raise your hand. Keep it raised. I know I do, but I know that in his perfection, he will bring this about at the appointed time, the perfect time. And until that time, we can understand it, even though it's a mystery. We can look forward to it. It can help us in this life to continue to stay on track with the Lord and to get to know him better and how beautiful it is, the things that he has in store for us. Hebrews 9, 28 says, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Would that be you and me? Eagerly waiting for the Lord? Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He came with the purpose of dying on the cross for me and you and everyone else who would ever call on his name and believe in him for who he is as Lord and Savior. He came. He accomplished that. The symbol's right there. We talk about it all the time. We were singing about it this morning. The cross is the symbol of the greatest victory that ever was, that ever could be. The only victory that truly we needed was in Jesus Christ in his life on the cross. But he's coming again. And he's coming again in glory. And he's coming again to redeem. Not, he's already redeemed us forever. But to bring us to be with him. All those who are in relationship with him. All those who eagerly are waiting for the return of Jesus. And every day that passes, every day that passes, I know this. I and you and everyone else is one day closer to that day, to this day when God truly calls us home and to be with him. It's incredible. It's something truly to be excited about. Our fourth point for this morning is that the rapture will be sudden and could happen at any time. There's a couple of verses I have. Uh, we're going to get to these. Luke 12, 40 is the, the first verse. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The return of Jesus Christ, God's made it very clear in Scripture and through Christ himself that no one's going to know that specific time. There's other verses in Scripture and even Jesus' discourse on uh, the Mount of Olives in Matthew 24 that talks about we can know the season for Christ returning. There's evidence. There's things that will be taking place in the earth and in the world that, that really signify that we're getting closer to that time. But it's not revealed to any man. In fact, even Jesus speaking said, not even the Son of Man knows the appointed time. Really? Not even Jesus at that point knew the appointed time. Only the Father knows the appointed time, or knew it at that point in history. And the point is, we are not going to know that specific moment where God actually is going to raise us up. It could happen now. Right? It could happen tomorrow. It could happen 20 years from now. I don't know. The scripture tells me I will not know. So when I say, or when anybody says that here it is, Scripture tells us they're got to be wrong. 
because God has not revealed that. So it's going to come in a sudden way. And it could literally happen at any time. Luke 17, verses 34 to 37 says, I tell you, and this is Jesus speaking, right? On that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Because those who are not in relationship with Jesus Christ will be left behind. Those of us who have Jesus Christ are secure. We will be with him at the appointed time. Whether we've already died and our body's been laid to rest or whether we're still living and serving the Lord, but when that appointed time comes, everyone in Jesus Christ will be raised to be with Christ. And everyone who's not will be left behind. That's a sobering fact. We don't want to be left behind. So how do we make sure that we're not left behind? Obvious. It's obvious to many. You just have to live a good life. How many people, really educated people, really bright, brilliant, successful people, when you ask them, Well, do you think you'll be in heaven someday? Well, I think so, because I've lived a pretty good life. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I've lived a pretty good life. I I got a good heart towards people. Oh, my goodness, how many times do you hear that? I, I still hear that all the time. And I have to, because it's our responsibility, I guess. I know that we have to help people understand. That's not it. That's not it at all. You cannot earn your salvation. What you're talking about is by living a good life somehow, you can earn your salvation. You can earn the right to be with God forevermore. God makes it very clear that's not the way it works. God makes it clear that that way is really too hard. That way is really impossible. What's possible is that the God of the universe came and laid down his life so that you wouldn't have to try to measure up to get into heaven. That's the truth. And so when we share with others, it's never, you got to fix your life up so that you can receive some rewards and even heavenly and eternal life. You have to get right with God is what we share. You have to recognize, just like me, That your life is a life that has been filled also with sin. Your life is a life where you have not honored God. You haven't even believed in God. You haven't believed in the God of the universe who created you, who did all these things for you. But what he did out of his love for you is to come and sacrifice his very life. And his son came to do that for us. And so now all you have to do by the power of the Holy Spirit is to believe in Jesus for who he really is. That's all. Wow. This great moment in history and the rest of eternity is available to me and you and every other human being simply by saying and believing that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Are you kidding me? Is it really that easy? It's that easy. And the world makes it so hard with the confusion that's out there. I've talked to people who are believers in Jesus Christ for decades that have been exposed to teachings in other places and somehow they're still living under some kind of shame at times or other things or wondering, I don't know if I'm going to be in heaven. Those who are more humble... I don't know, maybe I haven't lived a good enough life. And uh, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I am not your God, but I know you. I know you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I don't want you to keep thinking or believing that you need to somehow measure up. Otherwise, you're not going to be with Christ and all other believers in eternity. 
If you truly believe, you'll be with him. There's assurance from scripture. You'll be with him. So be at peace. Now, if you don't know Jesus, different conversation. Let's talk about how we get to know Jesus. This understanding that comes as the Holy Spirit informs us from scripture and by sharing the gospel. That's our responsibility. So we can share. But now, having Christ, look what's available to us. And not just available like we can select it or not. I think maybe I'm Friday Heights. I'll, I'll, I'll just pass the rapture and go straight to the millennium or something. No. It's going to happen. It's automatic. It's something to just be fired up about. Do I sound fired up? It's something to be fired up about as you think about it. But it's going to come suddenly. It's going to come and it'll be the strangest thing that ever could have happened in the earth where all of a sudden not only are the dead raised, but those who are living will be raised out of this world to be with the Lord in the air. For those who are left behind, I have no idea, but I can only imagine how startled they're going to be. And I pray to the Lord that when that happens, God will also use that somehow, some way, through the Holy Spirit to open their eyes that they've missed out. But if they're still alive, they still have time to not miss out. They still have time not miss out the rapture will have taken place but it also talks about things that we understand that many who have looked into scripture who have this belief that the rapture will take place before the actual second coming of Christ that we'll talk about we've got an end time study that's on Saturday it's a second Saturday of each month moving forward Chaplain Dave is going to be presenting on this next June 8th June 8th it's, it's powerful stuff. You, you want to be there. In fact, our women have just forced their way into this. It was, a, it was a men's study that the women now will take over. But here's the thing. We want you there. As people were asking, I said, yeah, let's, I, I looked at Jack as one of our elders, and, and he's over there. Yeah, 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 open it up, open it up. I said, okay, we've opened it up. We want everyone to be looking into it. Elena talked to me first after she first heard about it. I, I, I almost thought you were going to get ready and come by disguise somehow into the meeting to spy on us. But the truth is, this is actually a topic where there's a lot of complexity to it because it has to do with events unfolding and prophecies written long ago that are taking place and some have already taken place, some are unfolding before our very eyes. We're going to be talking about all those things. We're going to be talking about the rapture. And there are some different views on the rapture. And we want to talk about these things. We're going to be talking about the period of tribulation that the Bible talks about. We're going to be talking about Jesus coming again. We're going to be talking about the battle of Armageddon. We're going to be talking about everything that we see and understand from scripture about this season as it's unfolding. And what God is going to be doing. It's going to be a powerful study. So come along but fasten your seat, well, don't fasten your seat belt. We want you to be rapture ready, so keep your seat belts open. Keep your seat belts open. But this is such, it, it's more than a fascinating topic. And think about this, and I have talked to people who, some are actually because of what's written in scripture, and sometimes how specific and even graphic it can be, especially when you look through Revelation, that they kind of, Okay, that's all right. I don't want to look there. I, I just, you know, that's just tough to kind of absorb. And there might be different views on it anyway. And there are, of course, different views on it. So we need a wisdom as we come to these things, as well as a humility and looking for God's, God to continue to inform us. But there are certain things that are so unmistakably clear. And then the timing of things and how things specifically get fulfilled, even in our season, are a fascinating conversation. But God calls us to look into these things. He calls us to study these things. He calls us to talk and share about these things. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the book. He wants us to study all of the Bible. And oh my goodness, 2,000 years almost after Christ came and laid down his life for us, 
there's a lot that's transpired. And when we look at it and see how it lines up with Scripture and all these prophecies, oh my goodness, time to get a little fired up and a little excited about what's happening in this season because things are moving pretty fast. And Christ even talks about that like birth pangs. Birth pangs, I know. My, you know, my, uh, um, my nephew's wife, my niece, just got through delivering. The pangs start and they're unmistakable, and then they increase in intensity and in frequency. And that's what we see in our lifetime, things that are increasing in intensity and frequency in the world, in politics, geopolitics. It's incredible what's going on and how it lines up with Scripture. So I am so thankful that we just simply being dutiful and working through Scripture in 1 Thessalonians, this is where we find ourselves. Because the Lord wanted us to be here in this season and really look into these things. So I'm thankful to people like Jack Diego, our elder, who have been pressing for an end time. I'm thankful for Dave Cole, Chaplain Dave, for all the great work he's been doing, studying this and presenting information to people over time about the season that we're in. The Lord wants us to be studying what we're studying. And it's right out of his word. So that's our message for this morning. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you have in store for us. It is amazing. It's marvelous. It's it's just beautiful. And it gives us hope. It gives us some specifics that, that affirm this kind of hope that we have in you that you have prepared a place for us and you are coming back for us. And we are so thankful to you for all of it, Lord. Bring it about. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.